Chapter 79 to 81. Ringo was invited to Ray's house, which didn't happen nearly as often as when she was under his tutelage, as both were fairly busy. Her training to be the wielder of Kiba was long ago finished when she slit the throat of the previous wielder and took the blades for herself and she thought she would be freer but contrary to her expectations, her missions just pilled up and she was barely in the village. She had no idea what this invitation was about but she was sure the reason she was not on a mission right about now had something to do with it. After all, Mizukage really listened to Ray's requests. Nevertheless, it made her feel happy that Ray wanted to meet her. She was in front of Ray's door when she knocked. They opened but nobody was behind them which made Ringo frown. She raised her guard but inwardly she was thinking this was just another of her sensei's poor attempts at joking. With a sigh, she advanced forward, coming to the living room that was completely dark. She furrowed her eyebrows and was about to use her lightning to light up the room a bit when suddenly, the lights went on and she was deafened by a shout. Happy birthday! Ray exclaimed and had to instantly duck Ringo's shurikens. Ringo watched him laugh merrily as her cheeks went beet red when she realized why she was called here. The room was filled with various cakes and on the table were, presents. She actually forgot she was fifteen today. Her mind suddenly halted as she realized one important thing. Ray, remembered her birthday. A lone tear fell down her cheek, she quickly wiped it out, pretending to rub her eye. Thank you. Ringo said with a slight smile decorating her face as she came closer and sat next to Ray, biting her lower lip as their shoulders touched. Ringo was speechless. This was the first time she actually celebrated her birthday like this. Ray usually prepared a cake and a present but more often than not, it was in the middle of the mission and they didn't really have proper time for it. But now. She could see Conan smirking at her. The blonde old woman sitting in the nearby armchair was for some reason frowning. Then there was the little girl who was sitting in the lap of the old blonde, she was for some reason intently staring at her with, competitive, gaze. And Ray was smiling at her. But they all were here because they remembered her. The evening went on as Ringo chatted with Ray and the women, exchanging their experiences during these past two years since she stopped being Ray's apprentice. Ringo really had a good time and it proved to be incredible relaxation from the unending stream of assassinations she was lately assigned. Are you okay? Ray asked her. You really look kind of tired. He put his hand on her cheek, making Ringo freeze for a moment before she leaned into the touch with a happy smile. Yes. She lowered her head in content. It didn't take long though as she could see Ray frown at her which made her stop pretending and release a tired sigh, her head lowering even more, this time in bitterness. No. The number of people who have a meeting with Shinigami is somehow picking up and up and up. I have barely time for sleeping. She bitterly laughed, dragging her hand across her eyes. She just came back from a mission when the Mizukage told her about Ray's invitation. Sadly, she didn't get even an hour of sleep before the agreed time. Ray pursed his lips as he knew what this meant. The war was getting closer. Ringo is the best tracker in Kiri but due to his tutelage, she is also exceptional at hiding and sneaking around. No longer was she some kind of loudmouth who would just barge in swinging her swords. Ray heard she became a kind of a most sought-after assassin of Kiri. As he looked at his exhausted apprentice, he could do only one thing. He patted her head. You should take better care of yourself. He told her but doubted she would listen. Kiri was too important for her and if Kiri wanted something. Ray could only sigh and shake his head. Well, time for presents. He said cheerfully, making Ringo glad he changed the topic. Ringo was given various presents from the people around but it was nothing extremely pricey or important. Pajamas, Jutsu Scroll, Instant Ramen from Tsunade. That's why Ray's last gift made her stop in her tracks. He took out, two swords. The swords were both short swords, both were the same length as Kiba which made Ringo inwardly pleased as she spent a lot of her time practicing with swords of this length. But these swords were more katana-like, straight, with only one edge rather than being double-edged like Kiba. The craftsmanship was exquisite, making the swords appear elegant but Ringo knew they were crafted to kill and bisect. Not unlike Kiba, her lightning chakra was almost eager to enter the blade which made her gulp. The blunt edge however wasn't harmless and contained a minuscule sharp saw-like jagged edge that would be able to cleave through people with ease even though it would be a more brutal, bloody, and forceful way of killing. Ringo blinked at him as she didn't expect receiving swords. She had her kiba, after all. She took them into her hands with a weird look on her face only to then show an utter astonishment. The swords in her hands were, better. Better than her kiba. Sharper, more durable, and more importantly, better at channeling lightning chakra. Ringo gulped again and looked shakily at Ray, her mouth opening but no sound came out of it. Ray smiled at her, putting his finger on her chin as he gently closed her mouth. I wanted you to have spare swords. His hand then went from her chin to her right wrist, pulling it closer to himself as he unrolled her sleeve. 
He nodded as he saw the storage seal he painted on her wrist years ago. Ray then deposited both swords into the seal, puffing them out of existence before looking back at Ringo's face. Kiba has a reputation. But it is a reputation brought out by its former wielders. He told the girl. You can continue it, sure, but you would be forgotten as another wielder takes it into his hands. If. Ray showed a hint of conflict on his face but it disappeared as soon as it came. If you ever feel the need to create your own legend, independent of Kiba, use the swords I gave you, all right? But, the price. She almost couldn't believe her eyes. Both of these were not only made from chakra metal but a special kind of chakra metal that was also used to craft Kiba. It was a metal that would be a national treasure worth billions of Rio and the entire country would be elated to have enough to craft one sword. Yet, here she received two. Her head almost spun and her throat went dry. She was a swords maniac but even she didn't dare to think about something like this being real. Ma, ma. Don't mind I dash dot. Ray said lightly while waving his hand from side to side. Unknown to Ringo, Ray had enough of this metal in his dimension to actually gear up the entire country. Before he could even finish that sentence, Ringo kissed him. Tsunade frowned and quickly covered the eyes of the pouting Mei as she saw Ringo losing control. Ringo didn't care anymore and let her instincts take over. As her tongue invaded Ray's mouth, her hand quickly went into his pants and grasped his member. She was moaning from all the pent-up lust that was going through her and the only thing she could think about was finally getting what she wanted. She knew Ray could stop her any time so she wasn't afraid of forcing him. If he didn't want it, he would push her away so she pushed forward. She wanted Ray. Ringo already forgot the presence of anyone other than Ray so when Conan sporting a twitching eyebrow stood behind her, she only continued to moan into Ray's mouth, not even realizing the ticked-off predator behind her. Ray could only give Conan a bitter look that stopped the blue Annette in her tracks. A sad frown appeared on her face. She knew Ray had feelings for Ringo but... Ah, fuck it. She inwardly thought and even though her expression was the perfect example of stoic, she was mentally thrashing her head around in frustration. Ray, if you don't want to beat it into the thick skull of the horny primal bitch, I will. Resolve flooded her as she grabbed the back of Ringo's neck. Ringo momentarily stopped licking Ray's mouth but she didn't have a long time to ponder about what was happening as Conan shunshined away, dragging the girl with her. It was time for a long talk. A talk that was long overdue. Conan arrive down there privatize training ground via shunshin and ashly trail ringo on the ground into the grass. Take up a posture with the cross and arms she vite until the rediad recollected herself, starring at her in passivelle. It took ringo a few moments to finally recollect herself. She could still feel his lips when suddenly, she was yanked away by her neck. Of course, she would be disoriented. This was worse than any ambush in the field. Not even her instincts could catch such a treacherous strike. What was that for? She exclaimed and frowned when she saw Conan take out her small battle fan. Ringo instantly knew Conan man business. She saw to depend drill her kiba blades. What is got into you? She asked Conan as she crocheted down in preparation for the battle but Conan didn't answer. She just continued to stare at Ringo with her cold gaze. Conan didn't like Ringo. She didn't mind Tsunade as the boost blonde came to them already prepared to forsake her former loyalties for rei. No matter what it would take, Tsunade would go to admirably legtos for rei. Conan could feel that during their joining and it made her begrudging accept and respect the blonde woman. May, on the other hand, was young and maleable. Conan had ever intention to mold that girl into a woman vort of keeping around. She would teach the girl a lot but she also expected a lot in return. Well, it was not like she was maliciously plotting against the girl. In the end, May would come out of it better than ever. But Ringo was a different case. Ringo was alpha said. She wanted to be near her without giving her all to him. That, Conan didn't like. That, Conan could ignored called the allo. Because of that, she was now in an internal conflict of how to deal with it. He told her long ago he would probably have more women around him and she accepted. But she also decided to manage this arena of his and make sure her sisters would be kept in line. Sunad understood that and if Ringo wanted to become reis, she would too. But first, Conan had to give the girl a proper physical beating followed by a verbal hand. That however didn't mean Conan had to like it you are like reis fond of you. Other vise, you would cut you down right here and now. Conan said que atli bat for Ringo, it was as if some body de afened her as Conan's blow others fell on her shoulders, making her legal should there. She was well aware of how dangerous Conan was. Ringo didn't have time to contemplate the words she just heard from Conan. Before she even managed to vide her eyes in surprise, she was forced to block Conan's fall with her right Kiba blade. The second she blocked Conan's strike though, Conan twisted her vris which made her fan push the Kiba blade to the side and do to the speed of Conan. Ringo barely managed to block the second follow-up strike with her left Kiba blade. 
As derve apons toshed, ringulet apons off electricity ram fru har blade, creating a slit pushing force that made both women step back in the short exchange. Why did you attack me? Ringo es que tu ai o harais do tifuli vached con a indi har senses war sout in desu holdings for any surprise attack. You still don't get it, do you? Conan comente coldly with a disappointed undertone, rising har fun in front of herself. Um folding it ringo could se Conan's chakra flood in the fun and goop do enchi só the paper part of it glow as lit blue glimmer, significing a very concentrated wind chakra. She instantly pushed lightning chakra into her blood in full throat cliente quartet den it she believed that nothing except her best wood manage to block Conan's wind coating. Despite everything, Ringo was the afraid. This will not go like our last duel. Ringo said with in a hove dice. It is bit two years and he became a much better sword as man during that time. In response, Conan only impassively raised the hare ebro, not deeming it worth it to answer. As a breeze passed through the clearing, both women sprapped to vards it other, clashing a flurry of violent streaks, creating slick shock waves that ravaged the ground as they danced dangerously around, leaving devastation behind. The longer their furious quick exchanges lasted, the more obvious Conan's disadvantage became. She just was the melee oriented fighter. Ringo was pushing her back kit as ill even though it was a incredibly frustrating battle for her Conan was always on defense. Deflecting and redirecting Ringo's lashes in a way that would disrupt Ringo's tempo and make her momentarily falter. Every team the lightning and the wind quatting clashed, it would make the weapons bounce from each other. Ringo preferred a more instinctual approach to fighting but against Conan who had every move planned before him, it just didn't fare well. Vos yet, Conan's face was completely soys and relaxed even though she was be pushed back. The more time passed, the more frustrated Ringo became as she just called ignored code to get a proper hit even though it was plainly obvious she was a better melee fighter. She was more proficient with her chosen weapon, she was stronger, faster, more experience de melee clash, and yet, every hit of hers was mitigated. She got impatient. And, ligating release, lightning rod, Ringo showed as she jumped two steps back and her height hand rose towards heaven. Pointing the tip of her kiba blade at the clouds while her other kiba blade her left hand pointed at Conan. They weren't even five steps away from each other, so Ringo was charged with hit. She, however, didn't spot Conan's slick smile when she started her jutsu. Conan was practically guiding Ringo to use ninjutsu the entire team. She knew she was worse than Ringo in weapon he but that didn't mean she could not defend and defend herself. The tessenjutsu was very good in this regard and her wind was counter to Ringo's lightning. Conan could go for hours like this, shipping Ringo's stamina bit by bit but she decided to change those clash into ninjutsu one. Conan decided Ringo needed a proper reality check if her words should have the desired effect on the girl. As Ringo started her jutsu, Conan also started his. Wind release, swirling wides. A protective barrier of rotating wides instantly appeared around Conan. Ringo's jutsu took only a second and a lightning strike fell from the sky, impacting Ringo's right kiba. It then got redirected to her left sword which I made at Conan, reliás em concentrated and very dense lightning in her direction. But at the same time, the swift three swirling wind barrier around Conan started spreading outwards, creating layers of wides around her. The two attacks met with a deafening boom and a shock wave spread through the clearing, flattening the grass and even cracking the bark of some trees at the edge. The result showed immediately as Ringo was sent flying by Conan's wind jutsu until her body impacted the ground and an uncontrollable hole on it for a bit before she sprang herself onto her feet, punching Sligel. Conan just sotted in her initial spot with a slit provoking a smile on her face. You know, she started. In our line of work, it is not brute strength and that wins most of the feats. Instead, it is some slate of hand or a trick. Sha, having overwhelming power apps but it is not really that important. Conan told Ringo, make her furros her brows. Conan didn't care about Ringo's internal musings and spread herself towards her, swinging her fan. Ringo quickly put one kiba blade in front of her chest with the intention to block but Conan was determined to prove her earlier statement. The wind coating on her fan quickly dissipated mid swing, only to be instantly replaced by half chakra coating which made Ringo open her eyes wide but she was the able to react. Both wind and half coated lightning but both did so a different way. The wind cut through it, figurativelly speaking, while half absorbed and nullified it. Conan's fan hit Ringo's kiba blade and instead of the avited pushing force from the clash of wind and lightning. Ringo's Kiba's lightning coating was via Ken and Conan's half ardened fans marched right through Ringo's defense, it in her chest, sending her rolling on the ground. As he said, dust a little trick and you are already done. Conan calmly started. Ringo sotted up, spit a bit of blood to the side, and with a glare he added her Kiba for another round. She called an old code to help but feel as if she was again that 12 year old girl who was continuously getting smacked around by Conan. The clash continued, abate this team, it was Ringo who was being pushed away.
Conan was swapping wind and arf quatins according to the situation and ring was unable to react. She tried various lightning jutsu and Conan was actual in precedent her repertoire when the con passed 28 b mais rank jutsu but the result didn't change. Ringo was getting smacked through goat the clear no matter what she tried. It took three hours for the battle to end. Ringo was punching pra legion the ground while Conan was still her cow and collected soy self, standing above her impassivelle. She looked towards Ringo, noting she had her full attention. Ringo, no matter what you do, he will never accept you. Do you know why? Conan asked change a pile vatidas de girl on the ground gnashed her teeth at her it is because he can't trust you. She said, making Ringo's breath it but Conan continued, not minding it your priorities kiri. He can never be sure that you just won't backstab him, you know? Unless you hate him your priorities, you would advise you to try and change the target of your affections. You won't accept a potential backstabber me hey hater. If you try. Conan looked straight into Ringo's eyes to emphasize how serious she was. You will end you. She plally told the girl and shun shin away, leaving Ringo's beat in form in the clear. May sprang up on her feet and quickly jumped to the side to avoid a stomp from Ray. Good. You are getting quicker. She could hear but her mind had no time to react as yet another punch flew at her and she had to quickly decide where to dodge next. It was then she spotted Tsunade hiding behind a tree so she nimbly jumped towards it, evading Ray's punch. Ray didn't dally and followed her. He obviously knew Tsunade was hiding there but this was training so he played along with May's strategy and gave chase. The second he was close to the tree, Tsunade punched it which broke it in half and sent the upper half flying as Ray jumped above it to avoid it. Mei was already prepared for that and Ray was met with a lava bullet to the face, only to melt into water. Water clone. Mei exclaimed and instantly ducked. Not out of instinct but due to her being used to Ray mostly getting above the belt strikes when she is distracted. Ray was actually quite surprised the girl noticed this little flaw of his fighting style but he just continued doing so as it made it easier for Mei. Right now, he needed to give her some foundation and made her start using her senses and instincts during the battle. If she started to notice flaws in his way of fighting then clearly, he was doing something well. He also had to jump back as Tsunade went for a save by trying to engage Rei in a fight. He stood opposite Mei and Tsunade who were watching him intently, looking for any opening. Mei was learning teamwork right now so she and Tsunade were trying to fight against Rei. The catch was in the fact they were forbidden to verbally communicate and Tsunade reacted only when it was necessary. Mei was forced to do all the work. Mei was forced to read Tsunade's body language to know what she would do next. Mei was also forced to create openings for Tsunade as she only joined the fight when the opportunity for a good strike arose. But most of all, Mei was forced to survive while Rei attacked. He may have lowered his strength and speed so she could match him but as the fight went on, he was steadily increasing it. As she ducked, she put her hands on the ground, springing her body into a handstand and her feet kicked towards Rei who blocked her kick with his right forearm and then twisted his arm to grab her ankle in one fluid motion. Rei often told Mei that this should never happen and even Tsunade didn't try to save Mei as she got caught due to her stupidity. Rei raised his hand and lifted the girl he was holding by her ankle until her eyes met his. He was momentarily amused by her scowl as she dangled upside down in the air but it was time to admonish her. Mei-chan. He I smiled. What did we say about providing the enemy an opening like that? Clearly, you were supposed to either use ninjutsu or kunai there. Not trying to be cool by doing a handstand kick. He told her while shaking his hand up and down and with it, Mei. But. Mei tried to protest but Ray stopped her by whipping his hand to the side, throwing her away. She did a few rolls in the air until she twisted her body in such a way that she landed on her feet into a crouch. Again. Ray sternly said and their training continued. Ray sat down next to Conan on the blanket she prepared and started munching on a sandwich. Hmm, these are good. He offhandedly told Conan who hummed an acknowledgement, her eyes watching Tsunade spar with Mei after their teamwork training was done. One more year and Mei will be ten. Conan said and Ray sighed. Ten years of age meant graduation. Graduation meant killing a classmate. Are you sure you don't want to tell the Mizukage to get her through it via clan member graduation? Conan asked. Clan member graduation didn't require one to kill a classmate as clan children usually didn't even join the academy and instead were homeschooled until they were assigned to a team. This proved to be the right choice however as the clan kids were more prepared for shinobi life than the kids from the academy even after their first kill. I know Mei already had her first kill but I want her to kill someone by her own choice, not by a stupid coincidence of having her bloodline acting up. Ray said. It might be cruel that a 10 years old kid would die due to his decision but this was bloody missed. Things like this were quite common here and Ray's priority was Mei. If it meant he would have to be cruel, then so be it. Okay. Conan said and kissed Ray. Don't worry. I made sure she would be mentally prepared for it. She stated. 
It was then they saw Mei about to score a hit onto a Tsunade, only for a bone to stick out of Tsunade's forearm, blocking Mei's fist. Who would have thought Tsunade would be able to replicate Kagaya's Kekiai Genkai? Conan dryly said. Tsunade was working with their Kagaya guest for more than a year and every time she experimented, her expression was getting brighter and brighter until one day she proudly and smugly showed Rei and Conan her new bloodline. Apparently, she found out how Kagaya's body works and why they could do what they could do, and the rest was easy for her. With a bit of medical treatment, Tsunade made herself able to utilize the Shikatsu Miyaku. She said it wasn't even that hard. Must be nice. Conan whined. To be smart. If there was one thing she was jealous of when it came to Tsunade, it was this. Despite not looking like it, Rei knew that Conan wanted to get stronger because she knew only strong people won't be trampled upon. And when Tsunade's strength rose by a magnitude just by getting the Kagaya bloodline. Even Conan got a bit mad. Rei just quietly patted her head in order to calm her down. You have your own strengths. Conan smiled at that but then her expression darkened. What about Ringo? She asked. They had a fight because of what she did but it didn't really last that long. Both she and Rei couldn't stand being angry at each other so their fight didn't last even half a day. But since then, they haven't seen Ringo at all. For the entire year at that. Rei was quite exasperated because of that but he was slowly accepting it. Conan however didn't regret anything because she knew what she said had an effect on the girl. But even then she had no idea it would take so long for Ringo to come to terms with it. It was an entire year already. Last I asked she is being run ragged by the assassination missions. She has at least two per month. Ray said with a sigh. Yeah, we should probably start preparing for the war too. Conan said, knowing full well that Ray had non-stop ten clones making seals for their use. They knew it was coming and they were doing their damnedest to prepare. She frowned. May will be Jenin for one to two years before the war starts. I guess we'll just have to trust she will be ready. Ray said shruggingly, making Conan snort. She is already on the level of Chunin and that's without talking about her bloodlines you so painstakingly nurture. Conan rolled her eyes. I am more afraid of her mental side rather than her skills. She is too Yun Dash. But so were we. Ray interrupted her and looked her in the eyes which calmed her down. I suppose that's right. Conan nodded. Well. I think we will just have to adjust her mentality. Conan let out a long whine. That means shitty missions. She let herself fall on her back. Ray just smiled and leaned onto her, giving her a quick kiss. That means shitty missions. He quipped amusedly.